Welcome back to The Road to Camp, where we are reviewing films until someone invites us to the Cannes Film Festival. Today we're reviewing The Wild Robot, which has a score of 8.4 on IMDb. What we're going to do is finish today's review by acquiring the correct score for this film from the patented Nate Knight machine oh, to yeah. determine if it deserves the hype. Fred, what is The Wild Robot? This film follows Roz, played by Lupita Nyong'o, a service robot who is shipwrecked on an uninhabited island who must then adapt to her surroundings, build relationships with the local wildlife, and become, primarily this is the main point of the film, the adoptive mother of an orphaned goose, Bright Bill. I managed to avoid that as well in the preparation. I didn't know that, like, before the film, I didn't see really in the trailers too much. So for anyone, <laughs> any new listeners, any, any listeners listeners may not know that our typical approach is you will research a bit more about the film yeah. ahead of time, and I will go in stone cold sober mm -hmm. so this time different approach yeah. for you any reason uh no not not actually <clears throat> i did see one or two of the trailers i have found a couple of films recently have been spoiled by yeah trailers so yeah it's the way they go about it these days like you just can't be too careful because they have to release like three trailers mm -hmm. if it's a hyped up film like you know the marvel films over the last five years or oh, sorry maybe a bit longer now they have such a collective um, interest mm. and you have people who build their careers in the YouTube space, for instance, on scraping through every minutia and little detail within the trailers that it's almost impossible not to have things spoiled. And, and in the age of cameras, right, as well, like it's very hard to keep things under wraps. Yes. So I have gone for the approach of I'm just not going to... You're going to tell me the title and then I'll go and see it. Yeah. But... Yeah, there are pros and cons, right? Yeah, yeah. I was also aware that this film was <clears throat> doing incredibly well. I was, I, I, I knew that critics were generally yeah. saying this is a very favourable film. So that's for sure, for that. that's all you told me. You said like some some people have suggested it's the best DreamWorks. They've said some pretty really, pretty crazy things. Well, okay, out of ten, mm. I'm going to three, two, one you, and you're going to tell me how much you enjoyed this film. Not the main high score. For sure. How much do you enjoy this film? Three, two, one. 7.4. Okay. 8.0 for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good, wasn't it? It was a very good film. It was pretty good. And you know what? Contrasting our last film that we watched at cinema, which was another kid's film, has definitely put it more favorably for me. Transformers 1. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Which I wasn't as keen on. Yeah, definitely. This actually marketed to younger kids. I believe Transformers 1 was a PG. This is a U. Yeah. And I could tell it was a slightly younger feel. Oh, okay. And yet still, well, was just, leaps and bounds better for me than Transformers 1. It is leaps and bounds better. Mm. But I would also say that they are more universal. I, I think <clears throat> it might have been aimed maybe specifically at younger than Transformers 1. But there's something about those really high budget animated DreamWorks Disney films where mm. you can kind of enjoy them at any age a little bit. Like mm. a lot of this, this kind of reminded me of Nemo a little bit, Finding Nemo, okay. where it was just a very emotional, well-made animated story. Do you know what I mean? And it just kind of, it can appeal to most people generally as long as you're into that kind of film. Yeah, for sure. We had this with The Iron Giant, right, where you can appreciate this as a, a good telling of a type of film that yeah. we can all enjoy and we'll all have our favorites and we'll all have ones that speak to us more nostalgia influenced or not mm. and i definitely had a lot of respect for that as an entity when i thought of my score and i really did enjoy it yeah. it's not one where i'm thinking this is changing my life this is a a real chapter within my my filmic completely lore. agree however rachel for instance oh my <laughs> <laughs> really big fan. Loved it. Yeah. That's like within the first three minutes, yeah. within the, by the time the credits had finished rolling, not the credits finished rolling, by the time the title had come up, The Wild yep. Robot, she had gone to be, this is the best one we've watched. <laughs> she, had, she said, this is the best film I've watched at the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And to it, be, yeah, to be fair, I mean, if you were the right, if you, I actually think if you're the right age specifically, this could be a, a a film that is a chapter in your life. Mm, I'm, sure. I'm really sure if I was a kid watching that, that could be a, a film that I remembered for a very long time. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't need to... Actually, I'll come back to that. 
Yeah. You've given your score, right? 8.0. 8.0. So eight is great. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great film. Great film. Yeah. yeah. The, I think the thing that really, if we're comparing it against DreamWorks films, the, their animated films can be really funny. And it wasn't mm. that funny, which is uh, fine because actually I think what it was trying to do was more be emotional and powerful. And I think it really it did a, an amazing job of that. Mm. But, you know, so it's a great film and I really enjoyed it. Could it be higher? Yes, maybe if it was just like a, had a, a better place comic relief throughout it. I don't think it was quite up with other DreamWorks films in terms of the comic relief character. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree. However, it was still funny. Yeah, it did a good job of the bits that it did. Yeah, yeah. 100%. But it certainly didn't focus on it, did it? It wasn't quite Shrek or Kung Fu Panda for, right. for like comedy in yeah. a DreamWorks film. However, there were funny moments. Like yeah. initial interactions between like the main trio as they form in the early stages of the film. Probably where most of the humor is derived from. Yeah. There's also Matt Berry's character is quite funny, the, um, the beaver. Yep. But but generally speaking, it's not the funniest of no. the DreamWorks films. However, you mentioned the emotional points. One of the most emotional, I'd it, say. It really reminded me of Finding Nemo. It really did. Yeah. Like in terms of the balance of this is a super emotional story about parent and child mm -hmm. who with little bits of humor dotted throughout, but really the thing that you're going to leave with is like, Someone in your family's probably cried watching this film. Yeah. That that's what the wild robot is. But, and this is something which we have to get to in the review, absolutely jaw-droppingly beautiful. Like mm. a stunning movie to watch. I just thought it was a work of art from start to finish. Yeah, very, very good visually. Now, the one thing that I actually slightly I, I wouldn't mark it down on, but for me, there were similarities between Wally. It was almost like Wally, but a more maternal version. Yeah. And it's not just a retreading in any sense, but you've got a robot character who's a bit um, out of place. Yeah, 100%. With tasks and finding more stuff about themselves and about the world around them. Uh, and I would say that it does compare slightly unfavorably just in like a... Um, not vision, visuals. Like Wally is unbelievable to look at. Like one of the most beautiful animated yeah. films of all time. So whilst this is very, I, I said this is beautiful. It's I'm comparing it to like the top top. Yeah, I it's thought this was more. I don't know if it's necessarily necessarily better in terms mm. of visuals, but I'd certainly say it's for me. It was more beautiful than Wally. Okay, because I mean the the uh, Chris Sanders. Mm -hmm. described his approach to the wild robot as a Monet painting in a Miyazaki forest. So it's like it, that weird kind of painting-y style that it had throughout it, it was intentional. Now that's not as groundbreaking as, say, Wally might have been visually, because mm -hmm. I'm assuming it probably wasn't quite as hard to pull off. But especially in terms of the colors, yeah. this was just... it. I mean... Ebert, Ro Roger Ebert said it was, you could watch, you could enjoy this film without sound. Like it is literally just a work of art. From Rod start Roger to Ebert is dead. Roger Ebert.com then. Oh, right. Yeah. right yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't realize he was dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I died. knew he was pretty old, but. No, he, he died. I don't know when, maybe like 2015. Who the like hell that. is writing under his name? Well, he's like one of, he's like the goat movie. It was Siskel and Ebert, wasn't it? Yeah, so it probably is just his his estate. But yeah, I mean, I, th I, I think that, look, you could, okay, you could say maybe it's not as good as Wally, yeah, maybe. Right. But what you have to, everyone will agree, this is, if you're looking for a beautiful movie, yeah. this is one of them. This is a sure. stunning movie to watch. And yeah, I absolutely adored it for that. And we mess, uh, we mentioned the messaging. So impactful, well-constructed, all of these kids' films. We brought it up before and we'll bring it up again. They go into it and think, what are we trying to talk about? What do we want to portray? And then that is going to be the basis of some interesting and diverse world that we're going to create. And in this case, the main themes were parenting 
as well as belonging. I'd say. Any others in particular? No, I would totally agree. Those two specifically. Yeah, and they're favourites. They're good. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> they're such good, good marketing, that isn't it? Because who do you think is going to watch these films? It's going to be a kid and its parent. And so, yeah. like, if you're a if you're listening and you're a mother, I would recommend this film for sure. Because it, like, if anything, it probably focuses more on the parent. I was expecting it to be all about not fitting in. And by the end of it, it it ended up for me at least striking me as more of a film about motherhood than about anything else. Yeah, it's a great point. Like part of my review, part of my thoughts around this film were who is this best suited to? And I wanted to ask, should you take your kid to it? Should you generally watch it? When I say should you watch it, who are we targeting here? And mothers, oh man. If you're thinking about watching a kids film with your kids, it will be for you as well. It really is quite targeted to mothers. Go to the cinema to watch it with your kid, this one. This would be a good one. And you know what? If, you, if you're a dad who's close to your kid, it will have the same message to you as well. Because mm. it's more about parenthood, really. It's just yeah. the, the protagonist effectively takes a maternal position. But yeah, if, if you're thinking about whether you should watch a film with your kid, go watch The Wild Robot in the cinema. I would recommend it, definitely. So, so tying on to that then, we've got... Should kids watch it? I think it's more universal than Transformers 1, which I would generally recommend to quite a lot of kids. Mm. Certainly younger kids who like action. Mm. This, though, I'd say send it, send any kid. <laughs> send send yeah. whoever you want. Throw them at this one. Great kids film. And it's got a lot for the parents as well. Something that Transformers 1... I wouldn't say had as much for. Well, this is again the Finding Nemo parallel. Like yeah. again, it's parent and child relationship. It, it's the exact same format, basically, mm. but it's just with modern graphics and perhaps a slightly different route for how it achieves the exact same themes, basically. Yeah, for so. sure. And one more question from me then. You watched Inside Out 2? Yes. How does this compare? I would actually put them pretty much on the same level. Inside Out 2 probably had a more exciting narrative. Mm. Um, Inside Out 2 was beautiful, but I, I really was incredibly impressed by how beautiful the wild robot was. I just thought sure. colors-wise, it was I couldn't believe how beautiful it was. So, But I would say Inside Out 2 had a more exciting and interesting narrative whereas this was still very very good but yeah i would say it was more going along emotional themes for this one mm. inside out 2 was they're both ve they're both quite similar really yeah. um you've got the difference in animation you've got inside out 2 with its very unique gimmick mm. oh yeah and it creates a very interesting and exciting narrative they've both got a similar amount of humor they've both got great themes um, but it's probably just a little bit more exciting, I'd say. Yeah, so Wild Robot's more exciting. Sorry, Inside Out 2 is a little bit more exciting yeah. than the Wild Robot. Yeah. One thing, it's clear to me from your descriptions of both as well, is that like the themes of both are, are very interesting and approachable, but Inside Out 2 takes a very nuanced approach to what they're looking at so not just the mental health aspect but how they are portraying this is is very creative and wild robot whilst it has undoubtedly creative elements a lot of the stuff that they are um approaching is is covered ground well, iron Maybe giant more so. wally yeah then inside out 2 is very unique yeah but i would say in both cases what i've been really impressed by is I actually think the Inside Out 2 and The Wild Robot have better executed themes mm. than a, a, most films that are released at the minute. Like, I just yeah. think that it they... I guess I went into it with the impression that they would try and spoon feed me some not very nuanced understanding of the world thematically mm. in Inside Out 2 and The Wild Robot. And actually what I came out with was, wow, that's actually a really nice way of putting X, Y, and Z. And that's such an interesting in outlook on the world. And I just find that they do, 
these kids films thematically do a better job than like we came out from joker the other day oh, yeah. and you come out and you're like what the hell was going on in that yeah like thematically the purpose? It, and you come out of these and it's just so focused mm. it's just it knows what it's doing and it does and it has very well thought out, very nuanced understandings of the world sure. that I'm always very impressed by. So should you watch it, send your kids to it, yes. If you're a mother, great film. Uh, anyone who wouldn't be asked for it, you think? Yeah, I think if you don't still, if you're somebody who wouldn't go on Disney Plus and stick on one of the kind of big animated films, mm. don't bother watching this because yeah, it's another one of those. Sure. It's definitely not the best film DreamWorks have done. Okay. Without mm. a doubt. It's 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 another one of those, one of their really good ones. Well we'll see, as you know later. <laughs> we're doing the DreamWorks bracket, this or that. We're gonna and do I it. will be deciding whether it is the best DreamWorks <laughs> film of all time. Uh, um we're gonna dip out for the main eye machine. Ooh, it's coming up, is it? It's this film's got eight point four out of ten on IMDb. Yeah, so we're gonna, as custodians of the main machine, that's us. We're the hoping custodians. That we're gonna we're, we're gonna find out what the actual correct score I is. I can't wait to see what the real score is. <laughs> <laughs> not this phony IMDb score. Phony IMDb one. So and I, I, we're probably not gonna kick any foxes this time out of solidarity. <laughs> well, of certainly not for this film. Not that would be very film. inappropriate. No, no. And kick Pedro Pascal would be upset. Oh, by the way. Pedro Pascal is the fox. No idea. Did you? I didn't know going into it. I could not tell at all. That. I was like, I wonder who that is. Yeah. Pedro Pascal, no clue. Matt Berry, you could hear him. Matt Berry, I like 100%. Okay, make uh, that machining. Let's if you would like to boots. find out what crazy phenomenons take place in that godforsaken room, Ooh. you will find it in our podcast, which is linked below in our description. It will have chapters so you can jump to the correct bit. Righto? We'll be right back. Let's go. Maggie, what the fucking I told oh, you not on. to kick a fox this time. No. Oh, too many slain foxes. Oh, right, well, the good news is we have a score. Yeah. Would you like to know what it is? I'd love to know. I'm interested, I'm intrigued, I'm excited. Okay. As a curator of the Mate Night machine. A custodian. Custodian, that's what I meant to say. 8.4 out of 10 is what it's got on IMDb. Mm-hmm. We've put it through the main eye machine to Ooh, determine beep, beep. if 8.4 is fair. Now, they often come out with a higher score when they first released than perhaps. Yeah, yeah. I don't they, think it'll they be a four in five years, but it's going to end up on a, a pretty decent numero. The correct score for yes. the Wild Robot, <laughs> given by the, the patented main eye formula. Yeah. 7.60 out of 10. Ooh, very good. I thought it was going to be higher than that. Yeah, but... Very solid, 7.60 on a mate night score. Very, okay. very well made, right? Mm -hmm. Incredibly well made. Nothing scored terribly. No. I mean, nothing did of terribly. The one number. <laughs> <laughs> nothing did terribly. Um, incredible visuals, incredible sound. Probably not going to change cinema forever. Not the most creative plot in the world, but very well done film. You mentioned, I think, the main drawback from this being... Uh, comfortably in the eights is the originality. I think that's fair. Yeah, which does by no means is a huge detractor. Not every film is the most original film of all time. However, with kids' films in particular, for them to really stand the test of time, they need to have some level of originality. I mean, we talked about you know, I mean, there's so many of them. Inside Out, we talked about mm -hmm. Toy Story, talked about Monsters Inc. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Scaring for a metric, a KPI metric and things mm. like that. Like the, you can get so creative. So to choose to do another robot who's out of place seems like, could you maybe have thought a little bit longer about something to just set it aside? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't detract too much from like, at the end of the day, we, we said this, it's a great film. It's a really enjoyable film. Very Not a great well film. Not a great film. It is great. However. Very good. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing a formula that works. And that's what they've done. And it's the only major complaint that we can make is yeah. that if you wanted this to be more memorable within the pantheon of great animated films of the 21st century, say, mm -hmm. the ones that stand the test of time really have an element of differentiation. 
Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much for listening. This has thank been you the Roads Can, uh, where we are reviewing films until someone someone invites us to the probably camp not the personally. creators of Wild Robots after that <laughs> <laughs> glowing endorsement. Uh, so, uh, if you enjoyed this, we'll be posting three days a week on Ooh. YouTube. You can find us on Spotify, link below, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. See you later.